Okay, so. We've looked at inequality proofs before, right? We actually spent a whole topic on it. A whole rather confusing topic for many people. Um, we're going to try and fold it into induction as well. Um, personally, I find I'm, what, the way I'm trying to do this is, we've looked at these different categories of induction proofs, right? So we've looked at, say, um, the series. We started off with nice, easy series that we know how to deal with already. Um, we looked at some algebraic identities, which were a little weirder, but they still weren't that hard to do. And then, what have we been doing more recently? I'm um, stuff with factorials in it and um, divisibility more recently. Okay, uh, I've been going through them in the order where I think they become more complex or more, I mean, not more complex, but you have to think harder. It's less, it's less formal, formulaic. You can't just go through the steps and um, uh, machine it out. You've actually got to think as you're going through it. Okay, and I think this is a good example. So let's begin. Here's an, here's um, our first one. I think it's three to the air. Okay, so this is what we're required to prove. Okay, let's see. Uh, I, do you know it well enough now that I don't have to write it down? We're at four steps. We want to <coughs> test for the first allowable value, um, assume that it's true for a particular value k, prove that it's true for the next value, if you can assume that it's true for k, and then you just conclude with your explanation. Okay, so let, let's give it a go, shall we? What is the first allowable value? What do you think? Look at it. Hmm. I think it works for zero, doesn't it? Um, it doesn't work for, um, actually, does it? Does it work for negative numbers? Hmm. It does work for negative numbers. That's interesting. I'm going to start at zero. Um, I didn't specify, but usually it will be um, zero and on if you can get zero, right? So zero is kind of like the best case, but sometimes it breaks things down. Because we have that, that equality in the inequality, um, we can use zero. Okay, so let's give it a go. Now, usually you start off by saying left-hand side equals this, and the right-hand side equals this, and that's fine. Okay? Um, for inequalities, I'm going to start with the right-hand side. Hopefully it will become uh, clear in a second why, even though that might seem backwards to you at first. Okay. The right-hand side is equal to 1 plus 2 lots of 0, which is 1. Okay. So now I can look at the left-hand side, which is 3 to the power of 0, which is 1. And now what do I do here? I don't say it equals the right-hand side, even though in this case it actually does, right? Um, these numbers could be different and it would still satisfy the statement, right? So instead I'm going to take my inequality from here, right? So it's, I'll say 1, right? Well, that is greater than or equal to the right-hand side. It does satisfy it, right? Can you see why I did the right-hand side first now? Because now this final statement here is... The left is on the left and the right is on the right. Okay? If you did the left hand side first, you're gonna have right hand side here, and you'll be like right hand side, left hand side, and your inequality will be backwards, and it's it's just confusing. Just have it left on the left, right on the right. Okay? There's the test. Now we assume. So just straight substitution, okay? Um, also, don't forget to mention uh, what k is, right? So I guess we'd say k uh, must be a positive integer. Could be okay. um, like we just noticed, I think it does work for negatives. Um, but for now, since I'm starting from zero, and I'm going to go all the way forward, um, I'm just going to say k can be anything forward from zero. Okay. All right. So now my proof, okay? Prove, what am I required to prove for k plus 1, right? So I've got 3 to the power of k plus 1 should be greater than or equal to, this is going to be 2k plus 3, right? Okay. Now usually, um, when we've been proving these, you sort of start with this line, and then you sort of uh, twist it and manipulate it around until you can get something which will let you sub in your assumption. Okay? 
Uh, I think you can do that, but with inequalities, I think it'll feel more logical if you actually start with your assumption as your very first line. Okay, so I'm going to say by assumption right at the beginning. Um, 3 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus 2k. Okay. And now I'm going to try and twist and turn this to get into my proof. Okay, so what do you think is the easiest step? What do I want to do? What's the most natural thing to get from this line to that one? You could go with either side, right? Um, I haven't tried the right-hand side, so I went for the left straight away, maybe because I see the left first. So to get from here to here, I have to multiply by 3, right? That's what the plus 1 is, okay? So I'll multiply by 3. Um, so I've got to multiply this side by 3 also, okay? Now I've got my left-hand side. Nice. Now, over here, hmm, let me just, um, uh, switch the order around a little bit. I've got 6k plus 3. Okay. Now here's where I mean that um, inequalities will force you to just think a little more. Okay. This is not that. It's not what we were setting out to prove. At least it wasn't exactly, right? But it's enough, isn't it? Can you see what's happening? Um, k, right? K, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, is a positive integer, at least that's the way I've specified it, right? So if it's positive, then surely 6k will be bigger than 2k. Yeah, 6k is bigger than 2k, I hope, right? Um, so uh, there you go, there's a reason why k as a negative won't work for at least this method of proof, okay? Now, 6k is bigger than 2k, and 3 to the k plus 1 is bigger than that, right? So surely 3 to the k plus 1 must also be bigger than this, right? So I would say, since k is positive, right, um, you can put on the side here. I don't think this bit is necessary, but it's helpful for your logic, I think. Um, therefore, 6k is, is greater than 2k, right? So I'm just making the connection between what I have and what I have in my, um, what I need to prove, okay? So seeing as 6k is greater than 2k, um, because this is an inequality, I can just shift things around, right? I can say 3k plus 1 is greater than 2k plus 3. This implies this, right? It's just like saying, if, if a number is greater than 10, then surely it's also greater than 5. That's all I'm doing, okay? This implies that. And that's it, okay? Now maybe you didn't think that was that hard, maybe you thought that was very obvious, okay? But I know when I was getting through this topic myself, um, going from here to here is kind of, you get to this point and you think, huh, I was meant to get there. Um, well, that is there, okay? That's it, it's very short. Um, so by the principle of mathematical induction, I'm on my last step now. Introducing Mr. Wu. He didn't edit that, sir. Zero, sorry. I have nothing to add. Okay, done. Okay, so um, that seems okay. Let's, let's have a go at another one briefly, which instead of, it's, it's got a tricky numbers in there, okay? So instead of just um, multiplication, which is very easy to do with, okay? Let's throw a factorial in there and see what happens, okay? So, that's, um, no, that's over here, sorry. Let's do it in a new color. I think I mentioned before, right, that a lot of these more um, advanced inequality proofs, right, they will not work for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? They will actually only start working at quite large values, okay? So here's an example, right? Therefore, my first allowable value, you actually have to use your brain to figure out this one, is 5, because I'm still dealing with integers, right? Induction deals with integers. So, instead of n equals 0, I'm going to start with 5. Okay. Now, again, because of the way the inequality is going to work out, uh, I'm going to start with the right-hand side. So I'm just going to get rid of all this. Oh, 
Okay? The right hand side is 2 to the 5, which is 32. And the left hand side is 5 factorial, which is 120. Okay? And 120 is greater than the right hand side, the 32 that we got before. Therefore, the left hand side is greater than the right hand side. So, it's true for the first allowable case. Okay? That was the test. Here's the assumption. Now, by the way, because n has to follow certain rules, right? Namely, it's greater than 4. Um, and k is a particular kind of n, then k has to obey the same rules as well, right? So, k uh, must be greater than 4. Okay? And this will turn out to be crucial for us later, though, later on. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, what do we have to prove? k plus 1 factorial greater than... Okay? Now again, with these inequalities, I think the easiest way to, um, the most logical way to get to the um, end is to actually start with your assumption. So, by assumption, k factorial greater than 2 to the k. Okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me, where do you go from there? Um, like I said before, you could go for either side. In this case, I think the left-hand side, conveniently, is still the easiest to go with. Okay? So, if I want to turn k factorial into k plus 1 factorial, what do I have to multiply by? Yeah, just the next one at the end, right? Multiply both sides. Okay, now, on the left-hand side, I'm set. But on the right hand side, you look at what you've got and you look at what you're supposed to have. Mm. Mm. Now, um, what's the difference between 2 to the k plus 1 and 2 to the k? They're different by a factor of 2, right? So if I could multiply this by 2, I'd, I'd get what I want, right? Now, multiplying by something, I multiply by k plus 1. Now, it, just like in the previous question, multiplying by k plus 1 is not just multiplying by 2. Actually, it's better than multiplying by 2, isn't it? Because if you're multiplying by k plus 1, then you're multiplying by at least 5. See it? Right? That's the smallest value that it can take. And that's why we, um, that's why we tested it. Right? So, therefore, right, I can say, but, right? Um, k plus 1, this thing that I, I've, I've gotten here, right? Um, I could say it's greater than 5 from here, but all I really need is that it's greater than 2, right? Because I'm going to substitute that for a 2. So k plus 1 factorial is greater than 2 times 2 to the k. Again, people seem uncomfortable about this because it's like, oh, you're substituting stuff, but that's, k plus 1 is not equal to 2, okay? That's true. K plus 1 is better than 2. Do you see why you can just chop and chain things when you've got inequalities? Okay? And that's where my 2 to the K plus 1 is. Now, don't forget, again, um, the statement is true for what? So you go back to your original question, and they gave you the domain for it, right? Uh, N is greater than 4. Factorial is 24. Yeah, yeah, it does work for 4. That's weird. Why would they? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe I read the question wrong and there was meant to be an equality there, but yeah, same idea. Okay? Um, the key thing, the tricky thing, I think, okay, is making sure um, you get one of the sides looking just like you want it and then working out how you're going to twist the other side so you get what you need. 